Hey guys, so I just got in having a conversation with my friend and coworker Lily Dane about her getting pulled over this evening and I just wanted to share with you what happened to her because this is what it's like to get pulled over in America today in the police state that we live in. I don't understand why people don't understand that we live in a, there are people still that try to argue we're not living in a police state. Are you kidding me? We are living in such a police state that I can't even film a video about the surveillance mechanisms on street corners. That last video I did with, with we did with all the cameras on the street corners and everything without in the background one person being pulled over and it requiring three cop cars to pull one person over. So that should tell you something and that's what it's like. It is scary to drive your car anymore in this country because it's like you're a criminal when you leave your house and get into your vehicle. Everywhere you go, you are under suspicion of something at every given moment. You are guilty until proven innocent behind the wheel of your car. And so, Lily Dane, she wrote this article today up at the Daily Sheeple. Blood money, these companies and people make billions of dollars from war. Go check that out. That's actually a really great, really well-researched article. She's such a good writer and such a good researcher. She really is pretty awesome. But she's a pretty, pretty little woman, you know, and so she's not a criminal. She doesn't commit crime. She doesn't even have a lot of tickets on her record, but she does have expired tags. And so I showed you her article because I'm going to make a point about that in a second. She has expired tags. So that's her big crime that she's committed, you guys. Her tags are expired. And actually, it's not even her fault. It's a whole weird thing with her lending company has to fill out some form because she moved from Virginia to Maryland. So she moved across the border 45 minutes from her house, but she lives in a new state now. And so she has to get a title thing from the title company of the lender of her car and they have to send a special form to the DMV and she's had it sent twice but she can't go pick it up or have it sent to her they have to send it from the company to the DMV and they just haven't done it so they're kind of screwing over so her whole crime is really this bureaucratic you know ridiculousness that we live in it has nothing to actually do with her doing something that would harm the public you know protecting and serving from the horrible woman with the expired tags i hate when expired tags it's a real terroristic threat to society right she, she we had this whole conversation a little bit ago and i just wanted to relay to you her story she said it would be okay if i did because this is what it's like now to be pulled over in this country i don't even want to drive my car anymore you guys to be honest i aaron pretty much drives everywhere i haven't i don't drive that often by myself anymore because this is how they treat they especially prey on on women it's very frightening it really really is okay so she lives in maryland but she used to live in virginia she drove to virginia today to meet a friend which is about 45 minutes away from her house her tags are expired and i told you that whole thing with the dmv so she was pulled over tonight and at first it was a female cop who seemed pretty cool and said she wasn't going to tow her or anything like that. But then the, the male cop got out of the passenger seat and came over and got into Lily's face and said he thought she was lying and all this other stuff and tried to hint at the fact that the car might be stolen. Okay. I know her. She's, she's such a polite person. She, see, I would have been, <laughs> this is a really good thing. This was not me. Anyway, she said she was really, really nice about it. And I know that she was, cause that's just who she is, but she was very firm about this is my story. This is what's happening to me. I have not done anything wrong, you know, and everything else. So the guy just starts trying to intimidate her and be really just, excuse my language for lack of a better word, an asshole. Okay. So he, he starts going all half cocked, like, well, I can impound your car and throw you in jail if I want to, like some big playground bully. I mean, what else is that? Why would you just get some random lady with no criminal record and threaten to throw her in jail? Because you get high off your power trip? What a douchebag, all right? Then, because she is who she is, she responded to that with, why would you do that to me? I have a totally clean record. I've never been in trouble. 
and she says, I couldn't believe it. It was totally unreal. They made her get out of her car. Her friend was in the car with her, John, and they're like, oh, your friend can go. He's not being detained. He can go. So I guess he's just supposed to get up and walk away or just walk out of the car and go walk off somewhere. Does that make any sense to you guys? I think that's really weird. And then out of nowhere, a homeless woman comes walking over and starts screaming at the cops about how they ain't got nothing on her. They need to let her go. Because by that point, they've called in backup. And at that point, she's surrounded by four police cars and six cops. Four police cars and six. We have so much crime in America, you guys, that when... A, a nice little lady gets pulled over with no criminal record for expired tags with a bureaucratic paperwork issue. It requires six cops and four police cars. That is the country that we live in. And you're, and you still have people trying to tell you you're free. Something has to change. You guys, <laughs> we can't, we can't live like this forever. It's insane. This is insane. We live in or Orwell's nightmares. <laughs> Last time Aaron got pulled over, the cop was screaming at him at 3 o'clock on a Tuesday afternoon in a small town. Put your hands where I can see them, acting all kinds of crazy. We got pulled over again just the other night, like a couple weeks back, and I didn't have a camera. But we got pulled over again because we were coming back from Lowe's with a bunch of wood in the car because he's building garden boxes. And I guess our light went out on our license plate. And the guy was riding our butt. So who, we didn't know he's a cop either because it was a two-lane country road without lights on the sides in the dark at night. And so we just knew that, and Aaron's like, some guy is riding me. He's trying to get me to speed. I was like, well, just let him go around you then because usually that's what people do on a country road. If they want to speed, they go around you. But he didn't go around. He just got right up on our butt and rode our butt several miles. And then all of a sudden, all the lights in the car went out. And then all of a sudden, he blasted all of his, you know, red and blues and everything and pulled us over. And he comes up and goes, did you know your light was out on your license plate? And we didn't obviously know that. So we're getting pulled over for that. And he starts using his flashlight to look at through the window in the back of our car. Oh, I see you got a lot of wood there. Wow, you're awfully observant, officer. Congratulations. You have the same observational skills as a five-year-old. Good job. You know what I'm saying? What is the purpose of that? He's like a predator that just preys on people driving down the street. He was trying to get us to speed. That was the first thing he did. I mean, he let us go with a warning. But how quickly those incidents can escalate? You know, why? Because of a freaking light on a license plate? The only reason our license plates on our cars need to be lit up in the first place is so people like that guy can generate revenue for his minion overlords. That's what's going on because we live in a freaking police state. So then she goes, I is six officers really necessary? I'm not a criminal. And the cop goes, yes, you are. You broke the law. So there you go with the Nazi Gestapo attitude of every law is equal because it's the law. They can make a law tomorrow that says it's totally awesome to kill people's grandmothers because they're old and feeble and don't contribute enough to society. Do I think that just because that's a law, it makes it right? This is a bureaucratic issue, tags. Write a ticket for that. But you don't have to pull a woman over. And they kept her there for an hour, by the way, with this intimidation tactic. They kept trying to get her friend to leave her and leave her all alone with all these cops and this guy in her face. I mean, is that really necessary? Yeah, she had expired tags. Give her a ticket or a court date or whatever you know, BS thing they're going to do for that. Anyway, not that people should even buy into this whole corrupt system to begin with, because we shouldn't have to be forced to pay all these taxes and fees and everything else to be able to travel and move about freely if we're free human beings. So the whole thing is ridiculous anyway. So then she's saying, I honestly had no idea it was that big of a deal because she really actually didn't. Then he starts giving her a hard time about her insurance and he's going to, you know, go call them and try to verify that her insurance card is real and all of this other stuff. I mean, <laughs> and bully her in front of all of these other cops. 
You know, because I it's just... She said she thinks the other ones were maybe rookies, so he was trying to play like the big cop. I'm the macho big cop. But really, he's just a f***ing bully. Excuse my language, but that's what he is. I This stuff really makes me angry, you guys. I'm sorry. Excuse my language, but... <laughs> what a bully. Okay? And she was really scared. She was really scared. He even was questioning her driver's license. He goes, I'm really supposed to believe you live in Maryland. And, he, and she's like, did you see my driver's license? Which you made me give you? This is what I'm saying to you. This is what's going on. Something has to change. Nothing will until all of us stand up together and refuse to take part in this system. Think about this. What if nobody got their car licensed? I mean, not just a few people, not just a couple, five or ten people. What if hundreds of people across the country just said, you know what? I'm not going to do it anymore. What if thousands of us did? What if millions of us did, you guys? If millions of people across the United States tomorrow said, you know what? I'm not going to go get my car inspected. You can kiss my ass. I'm not going to go get licenses. I'm not going to go get tags on my car renewed. I'm not going to pay you your bullshit fees. If you don't get your, if you're a few days late on renewing your tags or whatever, you don't, you, you forgot your insurance card that day, they can rape you with all kinds of fees. It's corrupt. It's tyranny. That's all there is to it. It's a police state. That's it. Okay. So what if millions of people all across the United States tomorrow said, you know what? I'm not getting my tags renewed. I'm just not going to do it. Sorry. Do you really think that they could pull over all of us and intimidate everyone this way? No. There's a lot more of us than there are of them. And this is ridiculous and it's getting out of hand. Because you know the kind of stuff that happens in the news. Cops shooting dogs. Cops shooting elderly people. There was a 70-year-old man who was shot in a pullover because, and it was a routine traffic stop, he reached for his cane. He was a veteran and the cop shot him reaching for his walking cane because the guy was going to make him get out of the car. This is the country that we're living in. It's insane. Oh, I know he's at first. You've got to get mad. You've got to say, I'm a human being. God damn it. My life has value. And you want to know why I think the guy treated her so crappy? I'm going back to this special report we did right here about how they're using pre-crime algorithms that are based on your social media posts against you in real time. They pulled this woman over. I'm sure the female cop got out of the car and was all nice to her. Meanwhile, the douchebag was back there in the car typing up her information, looking her up in this system and getting her color-coded threat score, which is based on probably all the articles she writes. And she's written quite a few on the police state. Quite a few on the corruption of our police in this country and how they're being weaponized and militarized against us. She's written lots of stuff about that. She's very outspoken. Journalist and activist. And so, yeah, I'm sure they looked her up. And once he saw that, he was like, you know what? I'm going to put her in her place. What a bully. What a complete bully. That's the kind of person that if I, I just don't understand how these people live with themselves. What does he do? Go home at night and stand with his arms at his sides like, yes, I did my duty. I fought for the law against a, a person who's never committed any crimes, has no criminal record, has done nothing except have expired tags. You bullied some lady. Good for you. Good, good job there, Mr. Police Officer. You did an excellent job for the day. Give yourself a little pat on your little minion head. What a Gestapo. And until everybody wakes up to this and we all stand together and say, no, it's tyranny and we're not going to do this anymore, nothing is going to change. I want you to get up right now and go to the window, open it, and stick your head out and yell, I'm as mad as hell and I'm not going to take it!